Hello and welcome back to Darren Doing. I'm Will Hefstar and I'm joined by the brilliant Ben Barman. Ben, fucking did up Carabag, didn't we? Whoa! whoa, 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 whoa. Mate, I missed it. You, mate, the fucking... We were both at the game. Yeah. The opening sort of like light show mm. was so good. Boost Gumps. <laughs> I, know, I know people... Goosebumps. Boost Gumps. Boost Gumps. Boost gumps. <laughs> I know people like get annoyed at like how so, being at Spurs Stadium has become like a, an event almost, and and it's like yeah. a big show. But fuck me, that was good. That was good. Yeah. And the, and then I was I was tearing up at the at the anthem right oh, at the mate. end. Mate, it was quality. And I was, I was I was I was thinking about you because you I could see whereabouts. I know where oh. you normally sit. Yeah, so you were just looking like, at me. I was, I was like this, just hand and heart. Yeah, yeah. singing heart, <laughs> singing hearts out. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Just with, 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 with my stepdad, just like, come on, <laughs> we're back. It's like, this means take, more take, than it, take it in. It take did, it you know in, what? Just absorbing the atmosphere just, yeah, and if, the light show. It did feel good to me. Like, I know it was the Europa League against Carabag, but something about European night in there just was good. Just was like, can I ask oh, you a question? Grew... Go on, sorry. Yeah, go for it, mate. I was going to say because there's been a bit of a debate going around on Twitter this morning, right? about so a maths debate a, a maths debate I, I've been doing a lot of maths debating myself this morning <laughs> um so um did you know that they weren't you know they panned to the trumpeter on the on the screen you know yeah. UEFA's rules wouldn't let him actually play so it was just what? there for, it was just there for basically visual effect they couldn't play the audio through the speakers of him what playing. effect is that because I fucking heard him play it, I swear. I, I didn't. No, no, he definitely wasn't. I, it definitely was muted. Hundred percent. Because he went to. Oh fuck! I just smacked my mic. He went to. Um, he went to play it. Like, I saw it in his mouth, and I saw him like fucking blowing it away. Yeah, but you but, didn't. You couldn't hear it. Oh, because obviously we started singing over the top of him. So I was like, "Fuck me, we're being loud." We can't even well, hear so him. this is that, that's the thing. So this is the debate, right? So, um. Where is it? Definitely started. I, he definitely did it at the beginning. So, uh, Return of the Shelf, who do a lot of good work in terms of trying to mobilise the atmosphere and all that kind of stuff, improve it. Yeah. They tweeted out saying, Trumpet, Trumpet wasn't through the speakers on Thursday due to UEFA's rules. Those at the game, what did you think? And I think a lot of people have said that they actually felt that it felt a bit more organic. I saw Sam Cornish was saying a bit less choreographed. I think a lot of people have like, gunning for the Trumpet bloke a little bit. I, I've seen that. There's, there's a lot of hate on the Trumpet bloke. What, what's your like stance on it? I do you know what I didn't. I when they did it last season, I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, I quite enjoyed it. But I did yeah. uh, the, the other night. The, do you know when it turned for me? That was a North London derby. What, what when he they did, did it when they put him on top of the fucking thing last season. It, it becomes a bit silly, doesn't it? And like, he's now he's got like, Spurs like, like... trumpet guy on the back of his shirt, and they're doing like day in the lives and stuff. And I'm just a bit he's like... gonna do a day in the life. Yeah, he, I think he did stuff like he, he's gonna do shit like next because they're gonna run out of ideas from what he's gonna do. He's gonna fucking bungee jump off the stadium playing the trumpet, <laughs> yeah. like to start it off. It's gonna get very sort of like NFL, and I don't think people. I think people like the sort of just match day. I don't think people like change really. Yeah, but at the beginning, I think it was nice because it was like the start of the Postacoglu era. He did it. Yeah, the, I uh, agree with the, that. At the United game, and it was like oh. Fucking sick, like, and it, everyone excited was excited about the club again. Yeah, but now it's like, fucking put trumpet down, mate. Because I do, because I do think, I do think to an extent, as much as we have such an amazing fan base, and I think like Return of the Shelf, there are so many great people trying to do great things to like mobilize people to say no, let's get the atmosphere better, let's get it back to what we had at White Hart Lane, which is going to be very hard, of course, but. I think we needed it a bit last season. I felt like it. I felt like we'd sometimes, as a fan base, it's like, okay, yeah, we're going to sing in that, but we almost need that little bit of a kickoff. But now I don't think we do. And I think that I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Return of the Shelf have tried to organise like a singing section in the South Stand for Europa League games. And I don't know whether that's why, because I noticed, and obviously there was quite a few empty seats in other areas of the stadium. It's quite quiet where, around where I am, but it always is really. And you're always going to get that. I thought the South Stand sounded brilliant the other night. Yeah, that was like, the only real really noise. Good. That was where the noise was coming. I didn't yeah, really but it was all that. game as well. Like they wasn't... were just like there was no lull, was there? It was like I, I thought yeah. it was very good for where there was clearly obviously empty seats. I thought they and bear in mind it's a yeah, I'm not going to say a nothing game, but because it, it, it wasn't we, first game in Europe under Postecoglou, but you know it was against Carabag and it was a bit you know we got a but, league table to play now. 
Exactly, we're fourth, mate. Champions League. Oh yes. Yeah. Well, uh... <laughs> but yeah, no. I don't. What do you What do you think about the trumpet? Do you think time to go um, blood or? Um, I mean, I don't go, go as many games as you, but I think because I was excited for the Europa League. Like and and the anthem was going. I was pumped, and then I just I, and then he would come on the big screen just with his trumpet, and I was like, "Oh, for fuck!" Like that was my reaction. So maybe like self subconsciously, I don't like it, but I've mm. never thought about it really. I've I seen think, him get hate, yeah, but I like, don't have... when he when I saw him, I was like, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. I have no idea why. He seems like a nice guy. Yeah, he plays the trumpet well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we can play. <laughs> but, um, he plays that trumpet so much. <laughs> <laughs> you look emotional, mate. <laughs> yeah, like he, I, I'm kind of with you. Like I don't, I don't have an issue with it, but that's I don't love it, you know. And I think last season think... I liked it. Now I'm just like let the let them let the fans go, let them play. Yeah, yeah, because we know how to sing. Mm. It's like I think people don't like being told what to do because we're not going to not sing when he starts playing it. But I think people want to just not like we've do done it, it every year for the last yeah, yeah hundred exactly, years yeah, or whatever. Exactly. It's yeah. always been a thing. Fucking the game. sing, yeah. Like <laughs> with that. That, just some bloke at the front, you know, like in with the Carabag fans, where there was clearly one guy that was like orchestrating. Yeah, the whole he didn't thing. even watch the game. And he then didn't even one watch the song, game. it was like Carabag, Carabag. It was like I think they know the lyrics, mate. <laughs> it's like, I think they know They're the, the Azerbaijani uh, Chelsea, mate. Yeah, exactly. Chelsea. <laughs> Chelsea. Love this new Chelsea song Chelsea. we got for Cole Palmer. Chelsea, Chelsea, <laughs> Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> I think people. I think it's almost like a. I think people don't like how theatrical. Um, I get they're that. trying to make Spurs Stadium be because it the the, the, the old White Hart Lane was so organic, so natural, and and the atmosphere was like ridiculous. And you sort of, you're trying to force it. I don't think people like forcing it, but it is this stadium. People like I was people behind me. They weren't Spurs fans. You could hear it. they were like yeah, I exactly the same. They thing. were saying and and they were think they were being like yeah, the Spurs stadium's nice. Yeah, it's nice actually. Like I really like the Spurs stadium. Yeah. And it's that and then I think that's where people get a bit annoyed. Like it's not, and that's what nice. is going to happen now because it's, that's going to be it's going to draw people that just want to see it. They don't yeah. want to see Spurs. They just want to be in the stadium and say they've been. To... I don't know. It's, it's... I did, yeah, I had the same thing. Like, there was like a bunch of school kids behind who like sort of like turned up there in like the 60th minute or whatever, and it was just, like one of them was going like, "Oh, trying to say this one's an Arsenal fan or something." And then like when Carabag would get in the box, there was one moment where they not for the penalty, but there was another one where they went down and sort of half appealed. There were the guy was like, "Ref," and it was like, "Shut up." Just fucking shut fucking up. Gimp. Some two guys got fucking kicked out in front gimp. of me for vaping, which was quite funny. <laughs> Mate, there's so many people vaping. I know. I just you, kept seeing smoke you coming in the air. Like, where the people fuck kicked out like, in the first half near where you were. Yeah. Like, so everyone there? stood up. Yeah. So everyone stood up at their seat. I was looking down like, and... well, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. I was fucking fighting off a couple of caravans. Yeah, <laughs> They'll never get me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Will, no. I was, no, I was, I, I, everyone just stood up and it was almost, you know, when you have a chance or like you <laughs> in the game yeah. Where, what? where, yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone just stands up out of nowhere and you stand up like at the same time. Yeah. It, the ball was like with Vicario or whatever. And all of a sudden, everyone was just like, oh, and, like, stood up. and I was like, everyone was like, what? What the fuck is going on? Like, everyone just stood up and we were trying to look over there because everyone's pointing. I think just like a few people got kicked out or whatever. Nothing like kicked off. I don't think. I didn't no. see anything. I was trying. I was like, oh, my God. And like, no, go on. No, no. What were you saying? No, I was just saying I was, I was looking down at it. It was like it was a commotion, but I couldn't figure out what was happening. This was yeah. for context. I sit in the upper. I always do this. I, like my, my coordinates are terrible. Uh, Upper West. I'm in the Upper West, yeah, uh, my season ticket. Yeah. So you would have been in the Lower North. Oh, so, so I was fucking looking nowhere near you. Was I? Are you near the dugout I was or the upper right. side? Yeah, I'm, I'm on the dugout side. Oh, fucking hell. When I was singing the... I feel like a mug. When I was <laughs> singing the Europa League song, I was looking up to the left. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because I always say, like, I don't know why I always say, like, Upper East. I'm just like, that's not the East. It's the oh, West. So you're in the dugout. Oh, not, I'm not near it, but I'm the dugout side. I'm like that I'm, side. I'm like where the corner flag is, where you yeah. if you were looking to your right, where the corner flag is. Imagine looking at the corner flag and then just looking directly upwards. On the closest to me or closest to the uh, no, the south stand. Not where the away fans are. The other side. Yeah, but like the the closest to the south stand. No, 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 or... no, no. Sorry, yeah, closest to the north stand. 
not down there. Literally, like if you look directly to your right where you were. Oh, that's where you would have been. Corner flag, flag. Yeah, and then up there. Block oh, 509. Fair. Don't watch oh, okay, okay. it. must fucking seat numbers. <laughs> Do you want us to blur that out? <laughs> yeah. I'll give you my CRN <laughs> number as well if you want to buy some fucking tickets. <laughs> well, oh, mate, so when Carabao, because obviously Carabao turned up a bit late, I was yeah. thinking like... Did they fucking... turn up? They fucking don't think they turned up at all, did they? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, do you know what I found so funny? We were giving them the, their fans so much fucking shit. And they... <laughs> I was thinking like... They just want to see their team score so bad. And everything they did everything but score. It was so funny. Yeah. Like every time they'd they'd be like, come on, come on. And then everyone, yeah. they'd miss or something. And everyone just be like, you fucking wanker. Like actually, everyone, um, are, they, are they good? As far as, as, far as you know what? Happens, they're all right, weren't they? A bit they weren't that, but they played some football, yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, so when we when they come also, in, they also almost in. a little bit like, go on. <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah, see something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You the love of the game was it. was getting. <laughs> I feel like you heard it. <laughs> lovely drop that city boy. Lovely drop. Go on. Um, yeah, I've uh, the, they, when they strolled in, they were well late, and I was thinking these lot don't look up for it. No. And then it they like were they doing the warm up. Historical cigar in mouth on it. It was like literally. Yeah. We said this on the fighting cock yesterday. It was literally like they turned up for a Sunday league game. Like, do a few stretches on the side of the pitch. Just like, down the Lucas A. Right, boys. Come on, it's time to go. Mate, their warm-up the was so Sunday league. Yeah. Back out on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, their warm-up. So, they, because I was right by it, they, so, they were, um, they were, literally, they weren't doing shooting drills to begin with. They were just passing. At the, they, they got into, a, like, a rondo. There was just two people passing to each other, and the other ones just all standing still looking at it. We were like, "What fucking warm up is this?" Yeah. And then they were doing um, they were doing shots at the keeper, and it was like they were purposely trying to knock our fans out. None of them hit the target, <laughs> and then and but they were absolutely well in it. And then they'll be like, "Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry," on the pitch, and everyone was sort of like <laughs> laughing. But then we were going, "Who the fuck are these Azerbaijan champions?" Like, yeah. this genuinely looks like a son. And none of no one was hitting the target. And when the goalie did make a save, it would slip through his hands. But that what they what they trained for in the beginning, like in the in the warm up. Happened in real life uh, in the actual game when yeah, he missed did, the yeah. penalty, he fucking skied it. My dad was like, He practiced that. We saw yeah. him do that so many times. And um, can I ask you, and did the goalie it, slip one out sat, for Slanky? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Can I ask you, from where you sat, did that, did it hit the bar or did it go straight over? I've not actually watched bar. the penalty, but it, it hit did the hit bar. the bar. It, I was going to say, grazed, you know, when it grazed the bar, when it's got so much power, it goes right up. I was going to say, like, people, because I, from where I looked like it didn't look like it went that, sorry, from where I sat, it didn't look like it went that far over. It looked like he clipped yeah. the bar. But then all the other people after the game, when I was on the train platform, I got talking to some guy and he was like, no, nah, it was like one of the worst penalties I've ever seen. Like, yeah, absolutely. Really? It. I was like, it didn't look like that. It went that far over. But it I must have said, I, I think, think it just probably I took off it. after it hit the bar, like you said. Yeah, no, he hit it so powerfully, it clipped the top of it. And just he was giving it the old Ronaldo, up. like... Right before as well. I know. I knew he was going to miss. I, I knew. I thought he was going to miss as well. I thought Vicario was going to save it because Vicario was outstanding. I yeah. To him, but when when Dragerson got sent off, yeah, did you think we'd fucked it? No. Because no, you didn't think because because no. they uh, when when they started when the kickoff played, I was like, are they actually all right? We Carabag? didn't start very well at all, did we? No, we didn't. We didn't at all. Um, but when he got sent off, I was like, oh my God, we never make things easy for ourselves. Like Europa League, we're all looking forward to seeing players like Bergvall, all this stuff. Um, but what, and and it, and we just always make it so complicated. Dragerson, I think so, someone said, I can't remember who said it. Was it you? I don't know who tweeted it, but it was like, um, Dragerson, what makes it worse is Dragerson definitely knows that he's going to, he he's going to play all the Europa League games, but mm. like that's his assurance almost. Yeah. And now he's sent off. He's going to miss how many games? He's going to miss. I don't know. Again, we were having this conversation on the fighting cock, trying to establish what the actual rules are about getting the red card. So yeah. anyone that's listened to that will realise the car crash of a conversation that me, Flav, and John Bass had <laughs> yesterday. We were spent about ten minutes trying to decipher what the rules were. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I surely it's a professional foul. It's a one game ban, right? It's not. It's not. It's not more. It's not, re- like, it's, not, it's not um like putting anyone in danger or anything. You just yeah. brought them down, like just I, dragged them down. In the Premier League, if you do that, that's one game. That's not two games. Not three games. Yeah. So it's definitely red card. No, no complaints about it. As soon as you oh, went yeah, to red, we were just like, yeah, sweet. Carry yeah. on. Let's just carry it was on. So clumsy, but, wasn't it? But then, I, I yeah. kind of, oh, I, I will hell. stick up for him a little bit because when you look at the when it's hard when you're watching it in the ground, but when you actually watch it back on the TV afterwards, 
you look up and you realize you've got no one to pass to. <laughs> like, I know like, everyone's everybody's pushed too far on the forward, box. Yeah. yeah, and it's like yeah, he's got yeah. no option. But I think the problem was he let it like where he let it run across his body. He let yeah. it run across his body, and then it just like the guy just pounced on him, and it was like you'd yeah. almost rather him kind of. Let him just go for on goal. <laughs> yeah, because it's like seventh minute. We were going to smash him, and like, we yeah. and yeah, just can see. But I mean, we got a clean sheet, so maybe it's worth him doing yeah. it. And also, like, he was good, didn't it? He came out on he came out on Instagram and like, apologized for it, Dragerson. I was like, come on, mate. I was just like, you yeah, don't need to do that. Yeah. Like, we don't need to live yeah. in a world where like you've got sent off, and it's like just go in the dressing room and just be like, fucking sorry, lads, I fucked up. Yeah. Like, he, he said, most definitely not. The, not the way I wanted to start a European journey on a personal level, but the team is the most important thing on my teammates. It's an unbelievable game to secure the points. I've made a mistake for which I have to learn and continue to put in the hard work in my process. I'm grateful for all the messages I've received, forever thankful for the support. That's great. You don't need to do that. We yeah. know that you're sorry. Like, it's just like, yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I don't know why we've yeah. got into this thing of like stuff like that. It's like normalized. Yeah. You Weird. don't have to apologize. Things like that happen in football. That's why there's such yeah. things as like. Uh, fair enough for showing a bit but... of accountability. Like, it, it, fair enough. Like, you should. I, I tweeted it last night. It was like, fair enough. You hold your hands up, you show a bit of accountability, and you just move on. Like, it's just, you don't need to apologize. Yeah. Mate, it happened to Ben Davis in, like, on the stroke of half time, and he just got bailed out by Vicario. Like, this happens what so an much. unreal tackle know? that was by Vicario. I know. It was ridiculous. I, I thought it was ridiculous. I, I was so like, well. nine men. Nine men. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> We're going to see this again, like camped on a halfway line against Chelsea. Here we yeah, are, I did think and he timed it so well. Who we are. Um, Here we are, mate. But, yeah, I felt, I felt bad. But the, the sort of, like, the um, fallout from the Dragons in Red was, like, upset to see. Um, yeah. Before I get on to, like, Bergval, how good were Carabag? Do you think, like, we, like, because we cope well, we were fine. I don't think we played that well. But, no. Um, we, I mean, we just, we did the job, 3-0, 10 men, done. We, like, um, but, they could have scored at least three goals against us. I mean, yeah. they scored an offside goal, missed the pen. Dr- Vicaro, that saved Vicaro made. Again, we're going to get onto Vicaro. I was right box. behind it. Yeah. I, I, I was like, oh my God, what a goal. I, I said that. And then he just fucking came out of nowhere. Just like, tipped I stood up and was like, fucking God. And, 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 but I, didn't, I expected people to stand up around me. And then I realized that no one around me was Spurs fan. Just a gentle clap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, come um, on. But <laughs> fucking. <laughs> Where are you? Where are Where you? Are you? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, look at that fucking save. I know I'd gone mental about it. Um, and, but, yeah, I mean, they could have scored a few. What do you think that was? Do you think they were decent? Or do you think, like, the fact we were just 10 men just complimented them massively? And they it. could sort of, they had that bit of motivation, didn't they? Yeah, they were up for it. They up. were bang up for it, weren't they? And sometimes those are, like, the intangible things that you get in kind of these Europa League games where it's like, you know, why we got nothing to lose. Sorry, that as in Carabag have got nothing to lose. It's the first game of the yeah. competition, a long league phase. They're away to Tottenham. Tottenham just got a man sent off. We're gonna fucking go for it. Like, yeah. why not? And fair play to them. It made it a bit easier for us to be honest, because we could just sort of pick them off. Um and I like in the first half, nothing really changed with us having ten men. We we still had, I think, sixty three percent possession in the first half. Um yeah. it changed a lot in the second half because I think, you know, we were probably a bit more tired and you know, kind of let them just have the ball a little bit and then picked our moment, picked up a couple of moments. Um, I actually want to talk about the second goal because I feel like, I said this in my video yesterday, I feel like we've actually learned something from Arsenal. I don't want to say it. But well okay. done to Ben Davis for fucking standing in front of the goalkeeper. We never do that. It's not. Oh, did he actually do that? It's not a foul. He stands in front of the Come defender on. and the goalkeeper and just basically blocks him off. And it's like, finally, we've started doing it. It's like, <laughs> and then it goes to sign. But, um, They'll yeah, change no, that rule now. Yeah, exactly. Probably all Actually, that is a block. Um, but yeah, yeah. No, I think it was a bit of both. They smelt a bit of blood and fair play to them, but it kind of played into our hands a bit, didn't it? We still controlled the first half. Second half was a bit more like... We had a mad 20 minutes, didn't we, in that set? Or 15. It felt like 20 minutes. Maybe 10, yeah. 15 minutes. Like, around when they got the penalty. And I think even when we gave the penalty away, from that goal kick, I think we gave the ball away playing out from the back and it was like they had another chance. It was like, oh, what the fuck is going yeah, on? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's never yeah, easy, yeah, yeah. but you know, it was I think it was good to just get out of there and keep a clean sheet. Um, especially with yeah. those changes and those young players on the pitch. Uh, so yeah, I think it was a I think it was a bit of both, to be honest. Fair play to him. I'm glad, oh. quite glad we ain't got to play him away. <laughs> yeah, 
Oh yeah, we don't, do we? Right. Of course we don't. Fucking hell, yeah, that's sick. Yeah, because because uh, Carabao. I mean, we've we we know from experience playing these types of teams that we're and at it's a their long way away as well. I know, yeah, and we know yeah, how I'm fucking sure. hard it, like how many times we've been shafted playing away in like Europa League and stuff. Yeah. We knew we know we could be we should beat them comfortably, but yeah. we just never make it easy for ourselves. And Dynamo's but I felt so sorry. Yeah, Dynamo. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking about. But we've I felt so sorry for um Bergbau. Because he was on the match day cover, um, he was on the lineup. Um, cr- cr- um, what's it? Sort of graphic. And yes. he, uh, I, like, I, seven minutes in, he's he's obviously desperate to make an impact, like Archie Gray did, who we're going to talk about. But I mean, he obviously got subbed off because of that Dragos in uh, red. I actually didn't think we needed to make any subs when it went. I was shocked when he did it because I thought Gray can just hold back a little bit and then yeah. and and Davis and you can have a back three there Van der Ven, Davis and Gray and like keep playing yeah. how you do but obviously obviously that's the reason I'm not a manager because he, he made the changes and two minutes later we scored and we didn't see anything but we were pretty open I think but um oh yeah the the chainsaw like a doggy come on did you think that was the right decision at the time or, and like and how do you think that played out because I know you tweeted at half time saying you would like to see Bergvall for that more like control in the midfield but then Saar scored that goal didn't he so yeah I also didn't think Saar had a great game, though. I, off the ball, like I, I, again, I kind of a few people didn't really agree with me when I said about Basuma, uh, and we're going to talk about it in a bit. But we'll talk about it now. To be fair, like I, I didn't think, I didn't think off the ball. I thought, I think in hindsight, it was probably the right thing to keep Saar on because I think his energy in the game and a game like that was going to be a bit more of a basketball game. It's a bit more open. He's always valuable. Um, but I think Bergvall may might have just given us, and maybe I was blinded a little bit by the fact that we all wanted to see him. Desperate um, to see him, wouldn't he? Exactly. So uh, maybe that influenced my thinking a little bit. But I think he probably would have given us a bit more control. Like I said, we had we had most of the possession that first half anyway. And he does run for days, Bergvall, anyway. I know Saar, you get like you're gonna get that to another level. That's what he's great at. But um yeah, I don't know. I I I, I didn't think Saar or Basuma on the ball had great games at all, to be honest. I thought off the ball they were both pretty good. Um, mm. But I would have liked to have seen Bergvall for a bit longer. I would have loved to. I, I tweeted like Bergvall, Benton, Cole midfield in that second half would have been nice because I think Benton Cole when he came on, he just sort of like just calmed things down that little bit and was winning yeah. little tackles and which Basuma yeah. again was great at. Basuma broke up the play so well in that first half. Mate, he read the game so well. Oh, I because I, I, I saw you giving like you're quite critical of Basuma mm. and. Uh, what you're saying there is true, actually. There were moments where he was sloppy when you're thinking he's so much better than that. But I yeah. think he actually, I think he was, I think he was our best midfielder. He helped us win the game, no doubt about that. I, I think, think he was our best midfielder. I think, uh, uh, yeah, I think his interceptions were really key. There was moments where, because I don't think we were quite disjointed. A lot of the time we wouldn't be passing it. We'd be just running into space with the ball. Yeah, Gray and was doing that a lot, wasn't he? Gray, a doggy when he was... Uh, Basuma, there was one moment where Basuma had three players on him and I was looking around thinking, why are we... It's like when you put like the um, two magnets together, the opposite ends, and they, they repel. I yeah. was thinking, why are we doing that with whoever's on the ball? Like, everyone's just running away from him. Um, Basuma had three players around and he wins a foul. Like, I thought he was fine. I thought The penalty, I think, made him look like he had a worse game than he did. But I don't... It was, did you watch that penalty back? I, don't, I haven't seen it. It didn't look like a penalty. Didn't at the time... I think it was, but it didn't. I, my initial reaction was he got the ball again. Like where I sit, that was right in front of me. It was like you could clearly see that he just took the ball, but uh, I think it was a bit clumsy. Yeah. Where was VAR? Fuck knows. Where was VAR? Was it not in the game? No, it was, but I, I, I think it was. I think it. To be fair, I think it was a pen. It's just a positive. Yeah. When he did it, when he went for a slide, my initial thought was, why is slide tackling there? Yeah, but, I know. Um, you can be a bit more clever there. Just don't go to. I like, thought he did with the don't go to ground. He, I think he won yeah. the ball, but I think he yeah. again. I've actually not. I've only watched back bits of the game to like to try. I, I haven't watched back the penalty or anything. Like I've, I only watched back yeah. the game to pick out certain bits of certain yeah. players. But I, I, I didn't see that. But it, yeah. so people let us know in the comments. But I think he looked like he. I think he went through the book because it was one of those ones again. That's the problem with like VAR and stuff, isn't it? It's like your first instinct is to text your mates in the group chat and just be like, "Was that penalty?" Was that a pen? Um, and I think a few people who were watching it at home on TV said that yeah, it was probably a bit clumsy. So I don't know. It was but, it was the angle he tried the slide. Yeah, it was so like, he didn't need to do a that. Bit behind. Like, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah, also yeah. going nowhere. You were just shielding him down the line, and then you just go, "No, I'm going to clean through you." Um, but no, yeah. I, I think maybe I th- maybe in hindsight I was a bit harsh on Basuma because I think his presence on the pitch was really important. 
Um, and like I said, it, games like that, I said it to my I said it to my old man, like when as the game kicked off, I was like, I said to him, I was like, he's gonna run this. It's like this is so basuma. Like again, I've always said that the thing that frustrates me is how well he plays in the big games, but then lets us down in games that don't quite matter as much. Yeah, okay, yeah. Every yeah, game yeah. matters the same, but you know, uh, but I kind of thought the opposite. I was just like, he's just going to get on the ball and he's just going to be like, I'm fucking better than you. And I think sometimes, mm. like I said, he was excellent at winning the ball back. Like his numbers in that first half were incredible. But I just thought on the ball, especially in a game where you are going to be under constant pressure, just giving the ball back to them a lot of the time. And it was just like, yeah, he was. Done he the was. Great. You've done the really good bit. And then it's yeah. like, a touch too heavy or like pass was like interception. It was like, come on, mate. He did it a lot in the second half as well. But I think, do you know what? I think Basuma, and this is my fault. And to be fair, I think a lot of Spurs fans are like it for kind of for what he's sort of put us through over the last couple of years since he's been it. I just think I'm. We've got trust issues, haven't we? Yeah, and I'm more. Cri- yeah, literally. I think I'm just more critical of him than other players because it's just like, I know how good you can be. I know, I know they can play. I know he yeah, can yeah, play. Yeah. So it's just a bit. Yeah. But again, I, I thought off the ball great, but on the ball, I thought it was quite sloppy. Same with Saar, to be honest. I thought Saar on the ball was pretty dreadful. I, I actually think if you put Saar and Basuma in a, in a midfield, you need a Madison or a Bergvall. Totally if Bergvall great. stayed on the pitch, uh, uh, you would see you'd be talking about Saar and Basuma with the balance and the uh, how yeah. uh, and uh, how critical they were in that midfield battle. It was and more stuff. of an argument. Uh, Basuma anyway. needs that Madison type Agreed. next next to him that that player, and yeah. he didn't have it, so he would just run into trouble in the end of it. He has the talent. He knew he could just run with the ball, yeah. take on players, but he'd just do that one little yeah. touch. I agree, but yeah, he's, he's, he's good at doing that really in like the it. first phase where it's like you're trying to play out from the back and then he can just get past someone and then. But it's like, yeah, play the ball to Madison. It's like, or Kulizewski, who's then going to do that next bit. They I come think, deep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's irrelevant now, but like thinking about it, it's like it may be, and you might have been better off taking off Son and just playing Solanke and Johnson up there and then putting an extra body in midfield. I was quite surprised he didn't do that. Um, but it's not who we are, mate. So. Uh, I'm for a bite. Actually, you brought on a doggy, but I mean, I thought, uh, was great. Again, I thought he was great actually. To be fair, doggy. Yeah, him and Gray were really good. Yeah, yeah. Thought doggy's performance yeah. under the radar massively. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm gonna just chuck players at you now. Yeah, just yeah. chuck because like, and you're just gonna, you're just gonna, <laughs> you catch him. Yeah, and you're just gonna tell me how you think your games like, like how they play. Because I was thinking, like, did we have any standouts? I don't think. I think a lot of our players played like solidly. Mm. But I don't think there was like, oh my god, best like player. I don't think it was like that. But I think there was one. I, I, who's it? Go on in. Who's who? Do you think? Uh, I think you've written him down, so I'll come to him. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Dragus in. <laughs> <laughs> it was him, man of the match. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, I've got a question. How how good is Dragus in? <laughs> you turn it. <laughs> <laughs> I've turned, mate. Last chance. <laughs> he's on fraud watch. Uh, uh, yeah, he's on fraud watch. I don't. I mean, he he's obviously got a lot of potential, and he was colossal in the um, Euros for for Romania. But I mean, he, if if you're gonna be heavily critical, which I don't want to be, because I think he's got the potential. Yeah. He, has he had like two good games for us? Out of twelve. Yeah. Good. I games. think. It, good I think. Games, not like, do you know what it is? Like, I think he's solid. We. We miss Romero so much. I know Romero's like not. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I think Romero. I think again is another player we might have been a little bit overly critical of because he's made mistakes, but he's still been great in terms of his overall play, isn't he? Um. Yeah. And I think someone said it, and I know it's like a wanky football tactics term, but he's the only player in the team with uh, what? How do you say it? Pausa, power, power, pausa, pausa. Where it's like the Spanish thing of just like slowing the game down and controlling it. Yeah, yeah, stopping the yeah. ball. I'm gonna put my foot on the ball and just like I think we missed that a lot. Like that, you know. I know my dad hates like, that. Really, he just he's always like, "Why is he slowing it down?" But then, but then it's just drawing them. It's making the other team move, isn't it? So I just completely cut you off. No, no, no. I just, no, but you're right. It's like I think we don't ha- when he's not in the team. There's a noticeable lack of control compared to when he's not in it. I think I think someone yeah. I think Simon might have tweeted it. It's almost like we need he put a list of players together, Simon your man that is, of like one of these players out of these two needs to be playing in every single game that we play. It was like Madison or Kulizewski. And I think Romero's another one where it's like if he's fit, he's kind of got to play every game because it's just like yeah, he doesn't make that mistake, I don't think. 
But that, no, no, I mean, no, no. maybe that's being unfair. But yeah, I, I don't know. Um, okay, so for context, everyone, we we were talking about the, the collection dropped out, and then we were recording for ages, and I fucking didn't even press the recording button. So <laughs> I'm, I put my hands up. I, I put my hands up. I said, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. A generally, general mistake. mistake. <laughs> um, so we were saying about Dragson's age. We we're saying he's 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 21, great 22. Age. Great age, but he he that's the thing that he's got time on his side. And I think the thing is when he's playing, he needs a passer alongside him. We basically said, we, uh, yeah, he needs a, he needs a, that ball playing because he, he can't Romero. So good at breaking the lines um, and, and making passes. that. No, and, and that, 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 that uh, picture, that screenshot of Dragerson when he, before he made the mistake, no one was near him and he hasn't got it in his locker to, to do that. To, to make a pass out of nowhere or 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 the composure really to do what Romero does or Van Aven, Van Aven will just carry the ball forward past the past the attacking press or R Romero will just turn and 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 make space for himself but I mean time's on his side Dragson but I don't know if he's going to be just a a solid defender for us that we don't rely upon I don't know he I'm not too moved by him yet. But yeah, I agree. Time's on his side, and and you never know. And uh, he could be the set, like. These, thing is, if we if he is a fourth fourth choice defender, his agent's going to pipe up because his agent thinks he's the second coming of Chiellini or Benucci. Yeah. Or, uh, do you know what I mean? So, I think um, I I I think we'll have to see with him. But but his 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 best performances have been where he's been more protected. And Van der Ven and Romero are so good that you don't need that. Uh, they're so exposed all the time and they still don't look like they're breaking a sweat where Dragerson needs that bit of protection, I think, at the moment, where he is at the moment. But yeah, we'll see with him. Um, but yeah, Van Aven was quality, wasn't he? He was so he was good. great. Yeah, all, just yeah. automatic in terms of sweep, just sweeping up from the back all the time. Just yeah. you don't have to worry about him at all. Just like, just yeah. anytime they put the ball over the top. Look, we got done in behind a few times, grey down that side a bit, but then Van Aven's just across like that and just deals with it. So... He's, he's so quite, flashy, he's man. So good, so yeah. good. Kulisevsky changed the game. Uh, I think he um he he added a bit more control. I think that's what we needed when we like Johnson's been like brilliant in the last few games, and he scored. Uh, he, the finish was really really good. He didn't. I think what Great Johnson finish. does a lot of the time is he he smashes it a bit too hard, and he loses that sort of the the efficiency and yeah. and and clinicalness. He but he just passed, just that into passed the net, it into the corner. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, and I, I th but the thing is, I think he's always in fifth gear, always in fifth gear, and Kulusevski's he 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 uses the ball better with game management. And I think where we had ten men, Johnson. Nothing to do with him. I don't even know if he made any mistakes leading to a transition. I don't think he did, but that I think it, it was becoming a bit of a yo yo game, a bit of a basketball match, and we could have conceded uh, before half time. So I think Kulisevsky just added that something out, that bit more control. Yeah, 100%. Um, also yeah, to tuck then, into midfield at points as well, just make it a little bit more yeah, solid there, to carry yeah, the ball, to, you know, to lure players in to then win a throw or a free kick or something like that, just get us up the pitch a bit. Yeah. We just need, just it would, we needed him, and he did what he exactly yeah. needed to do. Was involved in the goal as well, led the little layoff for yeah. Sonny. Um, and there, there still were times where we were able to nick the ball back and go in transition. And again, he was he's always great with that. So, yeah, yeah. I thought Kuzeshi was great. What about uh, Solanke? You said you made a video, mm. Ben. Mm. The, the Kane replacement. That's what you said. Kane replacement? Question mark. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, but but I say that in my tweet, I, t I tweet out when someone when uh, someone dropped the comp of him. I said I, I, I said we've got our Harry Kane replacement, and I think most people probably agreed with me. I, uh, um, but I think there's a few people have sort of you know you, you can't replace Harry Kane. What you're talking about? Yeah. I'm not I'm not saying that Spurs can replace Harry Kane. I kind of qualified that in further tweets after I said that he is our replacement. You can't replace Harry Kane because of his legacy and no one is going to score the amount of goals that he scored for Tottenham unless it's a player that kind of comes on along in 10, 20 years' time through the academy, like maybe Will Langship, potentially. Who knows? Mikey um, Moore. Mikey Moore. Moore. <laughs> but, you know, well, they, not, they, he's a once-in-a-generation kind of player, so you can't replace that. You can't. But what you can replace is the... Not even necessarily the profile, but, like, I, I think that the, the thing that makes me feel like we've replaced Kane is the elimination of any doubt 
I don't have any doubt doubt about Solanke. And I felt the same from when he played in that first game against Leicester. Even though he missed a few chances in that one where he maybe could have scored come away with a goal. I've got no doubts about him whatsoever. His touch is so clean. He presses so well. He's perfect for the system. Um, the only thing, the things that Kane has obviously got on him is Kane's football IQ is incredible, but I think Solanke's is also very underrated. Kane's finishing, of course, is he's the best finisher yeah. in the world. Solanke's yeah. not a great finisher, I would say. I don't think he's a great finisher, but no. I don't think in this system, I don't think you need to be. I don't think you need to That's necessarily it. be a great finisher. Your pressing needs to be relentless. You need to win the ball back. You need to be a team player, and you just need to be there to finish off the easy high XG chance that will come away. Look, he scored two tap ins. People will say tapping merchant, stat pad, whatever. Nonsense. Your hard work, you reap the rewards of your hard work. And he's done exactly that. I, if he hadn't scored in either of the last two games, look, don't get me wrong, the Brentford goal felt big because it was like there was this stupid media narrative that he's like, he's finally got off the mark. And there was a few questions being thrown at Poster Cogley before the game, like, you know, are you worried about him or whatever? He was like, let's do a bit of fucking yoga, mate. And yeah. come, <laughs> come, come back to me when he's not scored in 15 games. Yeah. Um, so it was a big goal from that point of view, just to shut people up a bit. And again, the other night, he's gone two and two. They're two easy goals, but the movement for his goal the other night was really good. But he's deserved it. He's deserved it. In every game that he's played, he's added something to the team, whether he's pressing, that focal point, his weight of passing to Johnson the other day. And again, he makes that goal completely himself. And with runners beyond him now, in sort of the way that Spurs are setting up at the moment, being that little bit more direct, winning the ball back, high up the pitch, and then go, we spring from there and go. He's going to be absolutely key in this system. And I yeah. think he'll get the rewards of all that hard work with chances that he can't miss. So he doesn't yeah. need to be a great finisher. And look, he I think he's hes more mobile than Kane, for sure. Um, so he has a couple of things on Harry. Again, I'm not saying for any stretch by that he's a better player because he's just not a better player. But I think, I think I feel like we've replaced him because I don't worry about him. Whereas like we've signed yeah, strikers no. in the past yeah. where Kane's still been here. Or before Kane, like with Soldado, where you know Soldado wasn't replacing a, a, a Kane, but you know you've always gone, oh god, I'm not sure about him. I don't have any of that with Solanke at all. And look, he might go on a run now; he doesn't score in five games. But in terms of what he brings to the team, I bet you his teammates love him absolutely. Yeah, hundred percent. So selfless, 100%. and I yeah. think I, I think look, if he scores 25, 30 tap-ins, could not give a shit. Because no. it's like he he will reap the rewards of all that hard work that he's putting in. And again, it might be something that only our Spurs fans see or say if he does it in a big game. It's kind of like, I said this on the fighting court yesterday, he's kind of, the narrative around Spurs is quite similar to the narrative around him. I think people don't really want him to do that well. And I think Spurs, everyone's kind of doubting us a little bit and going, oh, they're not that good. Solanke, if he, if he has a game, if he plays like he does, like he did against Brentford or against Carabag on Sunday against Man United, Again, it's a step up in terms of quality and maybe scores a goal. Doesn't even have to score. People will take notice because it's in a big game on TV. Yeah. Then, yeah, then yeah, people will go like, oh no, his all round game was quality. You know, it's just like mm. we've been telling you this for the last five or six yeah. games. So yeah. I, I, I don't, I think, yeah, he's, he's ex. I really like him. I think he's, people talk about the fact that we overpaid, not a chance, in my opinion. It's a steep transfer fee, but I think he'll be well worth it. Yeah. Well worth it. The I think system looks he was so ready for him. that step up as well. Like he was, he was yeah. ready for that step up to a big club. And I think again that people question is like when I did the overlap, like Jamie Carragher was sort. Of, I'm not sure he's got the mentality to do it at a big club. I think that's nonsense. Yeah, that, that's absolutely Get to nonsense. Jamie Carragher in a minute. If, oh, well, yeah, fuck you, I thought we were <laughs> fucking mates. Yeah, but, no, I got, I got. I think, like I said, I think the thing to hammer home with the Kane comparison is just that complete elimination of any doubt. Is automatic. Yeah, I think that's what it's going to yeah. be with Solanke. But I don't. I don't think we were doubting him because I, I know that his momentum. He was brought in Leicester. He had a few chances, and then he got injured, and the momentum was gone. And then, and then the, there's a. I think the narrative that the media are trying to force is he is the main sort of s s seller on. I think Postacoglu is their next target for who they're going to sack, who they're going to pile on. Oh god, gotcha. he's the main. He's the main sort of. Uh, argument if he doesn't perform that that they can go for Postacoglu with because he's there he's uh, Spurs is like record signing and yeah he is isn't he he's, he's like 65 mil a yeah. massive investment and that's under Postacoglu and that's his man so that, that's that's where they're going to try and get Postacoglu so they're trying to force the narrative of yeah yeah, yeah he's finally off the mark against Brent he's played like fucking three like three games for us in, in the Premier League and and the figures 
even without the goals, he's been excellent. And he's yeah. such a level above Richarlison, such a level above Richarlison. In, the, in his all-round game, his, his, his intelligence, his, yeah. he's a lot more involved, I think. His, exactly. his, 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 on the transition, he's a lot more uh, quick. elegant and it's quick. quick well. And press, uh, we're such a better pressing team in the final it's, third. And it's, smooth it all comes through him. Clunk, it's smooth versus clunky, isn't it? And I love Richarlison. Yeah, oh, 100%. Yeah, but yeah. It's, yeah. It's, Solanke yeah. is smooth. Richie is just clunky, and you need to be smooth yeah. when I've, everything it, when everything needs to flow. You need smooth. Yeah, and that's, that's what it. he is. Yeah. It's like water. Yeah, and I think if Richardson's, I think Richardson's fit, which he ain't ever, but if if he is fit, he's fine. He works in the system, but you just see that level above Solanke, which which justifies us spending that much money on him because he he's exactly. And do you know what? We should game. be grateful for Richardson for the aspect that I think he made us realise that we needed a striker. Not to, not necessarily yeah. to say that he wasn't good enough, but it was because when he played, we were better, and it showed that this system needed it. Yeah, so I think no, exactly. Yeah, Charleston's exactly. involvement last season was actually really beneficial for the long term project. Yeah, yeah, and, and the chemistry between Johnson, Son, and Solanke is is uh, like it, it's the, the proof's there because he got the assist for Johnson. Uh, he peeled off of he knew someone was going to shoot. He peeled off, and he was he was the first one to react. He peeled off before he'd even shot, and then smashed in the rebound. His movement was excellent. That and goal. I just think, I mean, sorry, sorry and... to you. that goal that we scored on the first goal, the Johnson goal, we'll score that goal a lot. Yeah, yeah, him I, winning I, it back in the final. I third. think we could score that on Sunday. I said it in my yeah. video yesterday. I, who knows? Look, I, we'll talk about United a bit, but yeah, yeah, I, yeah. But I mean, we did, we could, and and we're going to see that a lot, hundred percent, because that's the way we press, and and he's he's he spearheads that press. He's he's the he, he's the main sort of focal point to the press. Everyone he leads. Um, every time we we chase that ball down, he he he, he never stops. He never stops, and he didn't look like he was tiring either. I think he's getting sharper. He's getting more match fit. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, he's it, you can see the potential in and and you, uh, where, how he's going to grow into this role because three goals and assists in, in two games is is looks amazing, looks so much better. But yeah, the, what he does off the ball is what Spurs fans will know why he's so key to the way exactly. we play already. Um. The more and you know, became, it's the more you know, isn't it? We know, yeah. we know what you don't because we watch. Yeah. It's the same. It's exactly, exactly what I said. Like the narrative around Solanke and um, and Spurs at the moment from the outside is very similar. We know what you don't. We watch us. Yeah. Like we know yeah, what you yeah, don't yeah. know. Like yeah, exactly. Um, and I just think, I mean, the comparison with Kane. Uh, we don't need we don't need Harry Kane right now. I, I know I know we I know we want like game changers, um, but that can come out swear because Solanke is the, if, out of all the strikers in the world. Solanke is probably it was probably the one to go for just because how we're seeing it already, how good he is in the system. But Kane, we didn't we had two short chances a game. Kane would finish him, yeah. and that's what we needed at the time. But now we've got a player that's perfect perfect for the system. And even if he has five chances, if he scores one. Still score two, goal, that's eh? enough because he's because we're creating we're generating so much more chances. So um I, I'm so happy with what I've seen from him so far. Love him. Um I, and then we've got go on, what were you saying? I just, no, I just I I I I I really like everything about him. I think in terms of like yeah. character, I think he just it just feels like I said, I, I keep saying it, but like it's just the elimination of doubt. His personality, yeah. I think, is great. His Oh, the city have just scored. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just got distracted. Well. His presence, <laughs> his personality is great. He's he's aesthetically a very good player. I I think it just yeah. made too much sense from the get go, and I, I I I really I'm glad that you know I feel like we sort of uh, to be honest I think most people in the Spurs circle, whether it's yeah. podcasters or content creators or whatever, I feel like a lot of people were very much behind it, but there were doubters one hundred percent. And I'm just quite glad that it was like not because you don't want to be like yeah I fucking told you because that's just pointless and pathetic. But Ooh, it's yeah. just good validation for like I I just felt it I felt it straight away with him. All right, and All the right. way Poscoglu talks about him as well, it's like absolutely this is his this is his. Uh... He, he calls him Big of. Dom, doesn't he? He calls him Big Dom. Does he? Yeah. yeah, but this is his like prized asset. Like you, this is what he and Poscoglu. He, whenever he talks about anything, he's so, he believes. What he's saying so much, and yeah. it's contagious. And when he's and and it must be contagious for Solanke. Like people, it must be hard, so mentally draining when you you've been injured and people are like flop. Like do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like fucking stupid. But yeah. that's the media and the whole narrative you've around. Ninety minutes flop. Yeah. Where's your fucking goal then? Have you scored? Yeah. Come no, on. Can't make it in a big team. Knew it. I knew it. Like that's the thing. So 
uh, and then Poster Coglu's there, like, no, he's gonna he's gonna score, mate. He's gonna fucking be unbelievable for us. And yeah. you just, you know it just instills him so much confidence, and he's showing it. He's getting more and more. He's growing in the confidence, and it's quality. To see. Archie Gray, kid's got potential. Gray, Gray, Gray. Archie Gray, Gray. kid. He's like two years young. He's two years younger than me. How weird is that? He's... I look like I could be his son. Yeah, the way, he, and he's the way he carries himself. Yeah, eighteen. Oh, God, he's eight years younger than me. That's mental, Love isn't it? What were, your, what were your thoughts on, on Archie Gray, then? Like, I mean, he's two years, two years younger than me. 18 years old. Euro, Europa League. Big, it is a big stage. Whoa. And he was... Whoa, whoa, whoa. He was unreal. Yeah, was like, I know, I, I mean... In, when you're thinking about his age and and the fact that he's never this is a massive leap for him personally, he he took it like a duck to water, didn't he? Yeah, looked really composed on the ball. Look, he got done a few times down that side. They obviously clearly targeted him. He's not. Look, he played right back a lot for Leeds last season, but and and the fact that he's played that well in that position for Spurs in this game, look, he struggled against Coventry. He did struggle against Coventry, I thought. Um, but again, we were under so much pressure and the whole team yeah. was playing poorly. Um, but I think what I love about him, he plays, he, he's playing like a midfielder at fullback, isn't he? Like the way that yeah, he strides yeah, up yeah. the ball, the way that he's so composed of it. Um, and there's a top player in there, like a really top, top player. Mm -hmm. Look, he's a bit, he yeah. was a bit suspect defensively, but he, he's an 18 year old kid at the end of the day. Like he was great for Leeds last season. Um, but again, he's been thrown into a difficult situation where we're down to 10 men and he came out of that test really well. I thought he was great. Um, I thought it was really great. And again, another one that I'm just not really worried about. You know, I think he'll yeah, I think he'll be I think he'll be a massive player for us in the next um yeah. in the next few years. So I I think he I think he's gonna grow into that SAR position. I see him. I think I think we're playing him right back because he's got the ball carrying ability, doesn't he? Yeah. And I think he will be I think he's got the potential to be much more technically sound than SAR. I think SAR is really technical, but he does he doesn't he, he's not when he's got the ball, it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing necessarily. Yeah, but but I mean, what Saar adds is all the stuff you don't see, which is critical. He's such a key, key it's player. Like, it's a bit like the Solanke thing that we before. It's like smooth, it's great, smooth, isn't he? He's quite smooth. yeah, he is Bergal, smooth. smooth. And he, uh, yeah, exactly. So saar has got a few years on him, but Gray. I mean, the fact that he's playing right back at eighteen. I know that he has played there. He's got experience there. He's played like fifty plus champions championship games there. But he, um, I think we're playing in there. But I think his his eventual position is is, is that centre mid, uh, centre mid role, that box to box. I think if he's next, maybe if he's next to a destroyer type distributor six, that's when you'll see the best out of him in the midfield. I can Absolutely. see it already. Maybe Bergvall a little bit ahead of him. I mean, yeah. And then that balance already, I'm thinking, I don't know who that six is. No. But that even balance already is. Even, but even this great. season, though, in the, in the, the thing is, it's hard because it's like you're not going to see Gray in midfield in the Europa League this season, are you? Because of Spence. Yeah. Unless, other than in maybe in the second half of the competition when we can jiggle things about a bit in the squad, maybe. But yeah. you can. that would have been so fun. Like Basuma, Gray, and Bergvall. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ugh. I'm getting, I'm getting boost camps thinking about it. Yeah, I'm getting more than that. What? <laughs> they are over eighteen. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's fine. <laughs> it's no, fine. just, 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 just be on the yeah, side, so. yeah, yeah. Boost camps. Yeah. Um, Vicario. Talk about Vicario because I, I think, I think he was outstanding. This is his best game this season because I think he has been quite erratic this season, and it's, it's a little bit worrying. But this game. Was perfect, and the seeing him with an armband on, with the captain's armband, was unbelievable because he deserves yeah. it. He's, nice moment, he's been yeah. made part of the group leadership group now, and it was a nice moment. I thought Ben Davis was going to put it on, and Vicaro wore it, and he wore it well. And he I didn't realize that well. until after the game. Someone I heard, overheard someone talking about it when we were waiting for the train about that he, Davis had given the armband to Vicario, and I thought that was nice yeah. because I think Vicario really stowed, showed up and showed leadership in that second half. Look, I've been critical of him over the course of the last few weeks. Uh, I've yeah. said that maybe... I'm definitely not saying that Spurs need a new goalkeeper to replace Vicario. Definitely not. But someone to challenge him a little bit more. But I yeah. also think that a lot of the mistakes and vulnerabilities that he has got in him are coachable. So I'm not really that worried about him, especially not after yeah. the other night. That save from the one from outside the box was ridiculous. Like world yeah, class safety. Yeah, we know that he's yeah. a great shot stopper anyway. So like we didn't I don't think we learned anything the other night. But in terms of as a goalie, 
But I think in just terms of, he was actually quite a calming presence at the back. I think he was just like, come on, lads, yeah. what, what are we doing here? Like, you need to help me, help me to help you, you know. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah. Peppering him with shots, and he was just, he just didn't, didn't, it would have been easy for him to buckle a little bit, but he was, I think he was excellent. And he's still got so much like time for development. And and Ben Davis, I like that because Ben Davis giving him the captaincy when I thought he was just gonna Ben Davis was gonna put the captain's armband on. Just shows that sort of contingency. Is that is that a word? What do you mean? Just sort of like a bit of unity, just a bit of like we're Yeah, but also you know Ben Davis is gone at the end of the season. So it's that sort of like that that passing that of the torch. Yeah, that sort of plan is there. Like we, we that contingency plan is that yeah, you get what you mean. Sorry, yeah, 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 I get yeah. what you mean. Like, like he's uh, Vicario's. You know he's going to be here for five years or so, and 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 he's showing all the leadership. Actually, a lot of our players are showing a lot of leadership potential. Like Kulusevski, so we got a question about Kulusevski being a leader. I think Billy Price, um, uh, like he said about Kulusevski potentially being a leader. We've got a lot of players, and that's quality. When you're getting a spine, a core of players that can lead a team and are all on the same path, and 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 yeah, I think it. I think in the next couple of years we're going to really see that sort of unfold. Um, that mentality is there. Vicario holds it, has it. Um, let's move on to uh, Man United then, because it's a massive game, and yeah. we've got three we've got three wins on a bounce now after a really tough spell. I know Coventry and then Brentford and and uh, and then Carabag, but three wins. They're three wins, and that's yeah. that building. It's all momentum, momentum, isn't it? It's all, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So. But we can't like stagnate. Uh, we can't. We can't stagnate against Man United. Uh, how how you think? Because I know you were feeling really confident before. Mm. Um, obviously, I think if if it was a home game, I'd be more confident. But I get yeah, how you feeling about it. The only the only reason stopping me from feeling super super confident is just our record there, and like they can, United have the ability to with certain individual players to turn it on and make it difficult. But I really think we can do it. I really think we can. Yeah, I think we're better than them. In every aspect, yeah. I think we yeah. are a better team than them. Yeah, fundamentally, better manager, better players, better setup, better tactics, and I think a lot of their weaknesses play into our strengths. And this is something I've been saying about for weeks. I said to you like two or three weeks ago that I've like I've earmarked this United game as a real yeah. opportunity for Tottenham to be like because again, it's sort of what we were saying earlier with like Solanke and the narrative around Solanke and Spurs. It feels like to to put a pin in that, and it's not easy to do this. But it feels like just to put a pin in all of that is win a game like this. Because one of the things yeah, that people have legit, exactly. legitimately questioned is Andrew's record in big games. You can't deny that he's got a poor record in bigger games, although he has beaten Liverpool and got draw away at the Emirates. Again, Liverpool was a bit dodgy with nine men. But um, I digress. I, I think that... <laughs> I think all of their... I, I think we can kill them. And I'm not saying we will, but I think that in terms of the fact that they like to press high... We've got some of the most press-resistant defenders. We can play through them. They yeah. sit in a lower block. They haven't got the defenders to play a higher line. So they leave a lot of gaps in midfield. And when you've got Kulusevski, Madison, yeah. Solanke, um, Johnson and Son and, and Bentancourt as well, to to when you break the press, to run at them. And also, what is it? We've got the second most amount of high turnovers in Europe so far this season. How did Liverpool, how did Liverpool do them? How did Liverpool... Dismantle them through that. Exactly, winning the ball back. I think all three goals they won the ball back in the the final, yeah. the, the night's final third. And look, we don't have the killer instinct that Liverpool do, but things are starting to click in the attacking third for Spurs. I'm not yeah. saying it's going to be a six one like it was is. in COVID, but the way we sort of took them apart there, and it's not going to be that. It's definitely not. But it's like I, I think we've got we've got an attack that is finding their feet. We've got. Every other aspect of the game kind of locked off a little bit more at the moment, feeling comfortable in that. We win the ball back like dogs. We fight yeah. like dogs. We just yeah. need to finish like killers. And if we can do that at United, we should have beaten them there last year without Kulazewski and without Madison. Yeah, yeah. They're a 100%. bit more solid defensively, to be fair with Delict. I think Delict's been quite decent so far. Uh, Masrao, he's been good as well. D yeah. Delo will probably play it for, uh, on the other yeah. side. I don't know what, which way around they'll play them. I think we can. I think we can do it. I, I feel. I feel confident. It's just. It's just the, the thing that's making me not want to go balls to the wall. We're going to beat them three 0 It's just that record there. But I think there is. I would not be surprised if that. I'd be shocked because it's like, fuck. I've actually done it. But like in terms of when you just look at the game on paper and take all of the <laughs> context out of it, I would not yeah. 
be surprised if we did that. I, yeah. I genuinely think that I've gone big on this game, and I think you have gone big. I think we can do it. Well, I, I mean, Solanke fucked him at the Vitality Stadium last year as well. And, uh, and Old Trafford, they beat him three 0 And at Old, oh yeah, and at Old Trafford. So they have. He's caused them so many problems, um, and I think that's it. That's he, because he's such an elite presser. Um, so if if this is if this is his sort of audition on the big stage, um, his first of like many, but this game to real really show because Arsenal he wasn't sharp he wasn't sharp I mean that chance where he, he had so much space still excellent he, winning the ball back though wasn't he was he? still right. he was still excellent but I'm talking about like what, that sort of like when the chance killer came. instinct yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but again that was his first game back from injury and then now he's picking it up picking it up Man United his trajectory in confidence growing and his form. He's meeting Man United at the perfect time, um, but and so is Johnson, and so is Madison, so is Johnson, yeah, so Madison, is yeah, Ben Tenkor. So I think the uh, the only thing is whenever we play against Man United, it's so fucking annoying. Whenever we play against Man United, <laughs> fucking do it again, fucking Bruno Fernandes. Fucking yeah, but I can see. Can you not see though? So you know, like Solanke win the ball back off that Brazilian number six for Carabag. Get out of the way. And... <laughs> Like Fernandez, on him. get on him. Or, oh, or Fernandez, Gugate, yeah, yeah. even like they, they're not exactly yeah, got the yeah, most. Yeah, yeah. If they're able to break for our press, they've got they've got Manu who can run. They've got Fernandez who can play that pass to to Garnacho yeah. or Ahmad. It slightly worries me a little bit, of course, if they're able to yeah. play for us. But I can see so That's why I said it earlier. I can see Spurs scoring that sort of goal like Johnson yeah. did the other night against United. Agate, fuck yeah. off, win the ball back, goal. I can't see that. Yeah, Delo's out of position. Yeah, or something like that. But the only thing is, is that they they drew to FC Twenty midweek. Yeah, they're gonna be up for it. They're gonna. This is their point to prove against Spurs. They're gonna like. You say and, that. And... I feel like United will in these sort of situations. Like they they were decent in that first half against Twenty, and then they were fucking terrible. Yeah, I d yeah, I know, but if they're just Bruno Fernandes has the best game he fucking plays all season against us. He was doing was it at our stadium? We beat him, but was it at yeah. our last year? He did like a Trevella fucking Rabona and, cross. Yeah, yeah, and 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 they were peppering our goal, but then we we we, we bounced back and we we played really well. But but the, the Rashford always scores. He will always score. He will come up against Poro. He will just knuckle ball it into the bottom corner or something. It's it's like you see the same patterns every time we play Man United. So frustrating. Yeah, That's why I hold it back a little bit from thinking. Like on paper, yeah, we should fucking batter them, but they will have. They'll play out of their skin. They'll play out of their skin, and I don't know what it. Every we've got. I've got so many bad memories at Old Trafford. But what's your, what's your favourite memory, at Old Trafford? Uh, when Harry Kane was miles offside, and he just kicked the ball into the stands and then dribbled down his mouth. When we, <laughs> do you remember that when we beat him two one? <laughs> It was under shit. It was like this was baby Harry Kane. Like it was when Sher oh. we beat we beat him with Sherwood and added by all scored and I think Lennon maybe scored. Um, and uh, yeah, literally at the end of the game, we were two one up, holding on to the lead. The ball like Spurs just launched the ball long, and Kane was standing offside, and the flag goes up, and it just falls to Kane, and he just fucking launches it into the crowd, and then it pans over, and he just dribbles out his mouth. Um, baby but, Kane, baby Kane. But other than that. One, I mean, I remember being around my mate's house watching us beat him 3 2 when Vertongen scored that goal and he does the super, yeah. And then Bale just oh, roasted yeah, yeah. Rio Ferdinand. And then yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah. As well. like, that was class. 6 1 yeah. in COVID felt like a fever dream. So it was almost like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> that didn't feel real. I always forget, no. but that's like one of our biggest Premier League wins and I forget about it all the time. And it, it was a massive game as well. That was so weird. They yeah. scored, Davin Sancho committed a pen. And I was thinking, fuck. Me, we're done for. Yeah, we're wandering down inside a minute. Or so. Absolutely dicked them. Yeah, yeah Ndombele, like, yeah, uh, that was, yeah, fever dream, exactly. But um, I think when Lucas Mora scored that goal, where Kane scored the header, was it 2 0? Oh, oh, no, 3 0. 3 0 yeah. for them, and uh, 0 for us. Yeah, no, yeah, three nil, us. yeah, yeah. yeah. What, fucking said. <laughs> what was it got? 3 nil. Respect. Three. Respect. Nil. Respect. But it also means. Three premierships, yes. and I've won more alone than the other 19 managers together. <laughs> Three for me, and one for them. Respect. That was top, that was top Actually, moments. Yeah, I mean, that was before Pep Guardiola won about once when <laughs> yeah, one five of the Mourinho <laughs> Premier League. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he knew he had to say it before he did that, he he, he could see it coming 100%. But oh, yeah, um. 
I, I, that that was probably my best memory. I think Lucas Mora. Yeah, uh, Kane's great good, header from Lucas Kane as well. No, Kane, yeah, it was Kane. He scored two. No, Kane scored one. Mora scored two. Oh, Mora scored two. Mora scored from the, the cup. Uh, Ericsson, I think, cut it back and he just whipped it bottom corner. We scored. We went. We went like one nil, two nil, and then he scored oh, right at the end. Didn't he? Okay, yeah, yeah. Kane yeah, scored, yeah, really scored that really good header. Kane scored that header. It was like. Fuck off. Yeah, That's fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. That was for one nil, wasn't it? But I, 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 I that think was Poch um, in the funeral suit, wasn't it? We turned up in the all black yeah, suit black after out, the race yeah. got done for drink driving. He was being a little. <laughs> he, yeah, he was being a bit of a slut, Poch. You know, because I guarantee he probably had a meeting with Man United after that. Yeah, he was. That was when he was his, being heavily best. linked. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he was being, best suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't you come prepared? But um, I think that's probably it. obviously the COVID one as well. But um, yeah, I. How do you think, like, what's the team you'd play and how do you think we're going to play? Because I, I think I think we should just go unchanged. With, I agree. With, from, Bre- from Brentford. From Brentford, yeah. Yeah, I think the only debate, but obviously there's a bit of a question mark over Sonny's fitness, but I think he'll be fine. Uh, I he'll fucking be hope he'll be fine. fine. Otherwise, it'll be Werner, won't it? Um, no, it won't. Well, who else is it going to be? Fuck, it will be. <laughs> it fucking will be, won't it? Wilson not a bear. Strap that hamstring up right now, big boy. <laughs> um, no, it'll be, it'll be it'll be Werner, but I think I think Sonny be all right. I think the way Anne said it was like he's fine. He sort of said he's he's fine, but he just got Get a bit that fucking ice pack on you, and you'll be all um, right. But the the only the only question not question mark the only the fifty fifty is Benson Core Basuma for me. What would you do? I think I think you've got to play Benson Core. Yeah, until he gets banned or or bent and core. Uh, it's such a hard I, one. Isn't I just it? it's like, do you want to give Basuma the run of games that he's going to need that rhythm to get back when yeah. Bentacore's not there, or do you make the most out of Bentacore while he is here? I think I think it's just a battle between them. I think Bent and Core is his place to lose now, and yeah. then Basuma is going to be his place. I think it's that's what competition does. Bent and Core was a ten out of ten against Brentford. It'll be and he didn't start in in midweek. It'd be weird if he if he then didn't start again i think so i think True. I, I mean madison got rested kulisevsky got rested for 45 minutes a doggy was pl- planned to get rested for at johnson least the first only half. played 45 um, johnson only played 45 solanke and son yeah but uh, van der ven uh, as well uh, yeah, van der ven yeah but then you got poro yeah madders benton core romero the massive players for us that that have have had a bit of a break so um i'm um, in that case, I'm thinking I can see us maybe stunning United, having a couple of chance, having a couple. I think it, what we can't do is what we did against Leicester, where we keep missing fucking chances, and and then and then yeah, because they will punish us. So we need to be clinical and we need to kill them off. But that's a, that's a given, anyways. But um, how do you think they'll do us if if because they're good on the transition? If they beat us, how how would they do us? Yeah, but they're quite wasteful as well. Like when you watch them against Palace, they should have been yeah, true. should have taken that game away from Palace in the first half. And then I think the thing with United is that if they if they always seem to go through that period where they in in games, I mean, like they create, they create, they create. They either score or they miss chances, and then in the second half they come out and it's like they they're not able to refine that spark again like Crystal Palace was the perfect yeah. example they had all the momentum in that first half Garnacho hit the bar Fernandez hit the bar they were unlucky and then the second half the game completely changed and I, again look, yeah. they came out they came out sharp against us last year didn't they Hoyland scored in the first few minutes um, th- we'll always be in the that game. was ridiculous sorry that was that was ridiculous because Hoyland Hoyland my brother yeah yeah he he, he, he was Sean Millis until he played us loneliness oh, follow me around <laughs> yeah waiting for a wait what a I'll bring that back bring that back because he uh, where the fuck is Hoyland gone since he scored against us as well yeah, he, he didn't score he scored the game before us and then scored an absolute bang against us that is what coach. I'm talking about about Man United yeah that's what I'm talking about they just fucking turn up against us anyway yeah, I just, okay, no, no, you're all right you're all right but what were you saying before I cut you off? Um, I think I just think we'll, 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 yeah, and I think we'll all, the but I think we'll always, them. we'll always be in the game. We'll always be yeah. in the game. That's the thing. We won't, yeah. we won't ever be out of that game because they're going to leave, they leave gaps. They won't take the chances. The heads will go down. The fans will be on them as well. There's pressure on Ten Hag at the moment. So there is, of course, they can hurt us. Rashford, Rashford played well in the week. Um, Against twenty, 
Um, looks to be getting a bit more sharp now, looks to be getting a bit more back into him. Again, he didn't start against Crystal Palace though last weekend. So be interesting to see what how they actually set up. But um, no, nah, I think um I yeah, of course they can hurt us individual quality, but I think we're gonna have most of the I think we're gonna dominate the game and have the most chances, but yeah, I think it's gonna be individual moments on the counter attack potentially where they hurt us. They they could set up how they did in the FA Cup final against City and they could do us that in that, that way. But I think at home they won't do that. They're at Old Trafford. They're not going to do that, I don't think. But um, they'll try and have a go at us, and that's where they're going to. That's where their downfall is going to be, I think. But I, agree. I mean, uh, could we be the final night nail in the coffin for Tenog? Uh, do you think they were? Do you, uh, on this question, do you think if if we beat them two or three nil or so three one, do you think that he gets sacked? I think he You've got would, Porto next, be, and then they've got Aston Villa. Uh, Aston Villa will be it. I think you know what I think they've Where played really they well. Man United, they played it really well, like two cores. I I think they played it really well. Man United because um, they've everyone wins with keeping Ten Hag for for like signing a new contract, all that stuff. Like Ten Hag, because if they'd have sacked him, that everyone would be like, he's just won an FA Cup. Like what the fuck are you doing? Or the Ten Hag outers will be like, yeah, good, let's like get on to, it. but. If they're like, we gave him a chance, we gave him, and and, yeah. and nothing was. They look good still. If they if they wanted to sack him, get, giving him an extra like month into the season, and knowing that he's going to fail, is it? It looks good for them. But he has been backed. They've 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 made moves in the transfer. Very right? true. Very but, true. Uh, yeah, I, I think I th- I actually think it'll be two two. Desmond, like last year, I could see that. I could see a score draw. I think I, I, I still think whatever happens in the game in terms of score, I still, I think I'll still come away from it based on the performance, thinking that we should have done what I thought we might do. Like I think we, it would be one of yeah. those games where it's like, how did we not beat them? If we yeah, don't beat yeah. them, I still, I think we'll dominate yeah. the play have most of the chances. Um, and if we don't win, I think we'll come away from it thinking that we should have done. Not that we were bad. That it's just it'll be one of those where it's like, and then also in the grand scheme of things, if we get a point in Old Trafford, move on. Not the worst thing in the world at all, is it? So, do you but think it was like we, just we, shut we, the noise up? That would be a lovely little win. That's it. But, yeah, it's shutting the noise up because do you not think if we draw or or we lose this game, this that like we we're stagnating again. But like the uh, you know how the minority scream the loudest sort of thing. Yeah, it's gonna be so horrible for the next like week or so again because we beat Brentford. Yeah, we beat Coventry. Poor performance, Carabag. This this game is a we need to make a statement now because uh, and, uh, we can definitely do it. But if we go to Old Trafford, come away with zero points, it leads us on to the question um, uh, from from Jackie and Account uh, debating the the Carragher. Uh, it's, um, article that he wrote yeah and we'll, we'll end on this um let me just find it um but he says Carragher's article saying we're turning into an entertaining cup side is that a bad thing if it's true if we got an fa cup and finished seventh not many fans would be c- complaining it's a great question that. fucking hit nail on the head every, there, every week jack every I, week i know he's he's a he's a talent jack you need i don't know what you do but you need to do something with your talent mate yeah. If if if, if... <laughs> no, but like the, every question just is unbelievable. Yeah, bro, um, yeah, he's so good. Um, I uh, yeah, what, you gonna take it away, Ben, mate? I, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world at all, is it? Because I think Ange said it yesterday in the press conference where he was like, he got asked about Ten Hag, and he basically said he was like, Ten Hag. Ange said Ten Hag keeps telling everyone that he's won two trophies, and he's right. He, he shouldn't. He, he's right to do that because um, I can't remember. What he actually, I can't remember word for word what he actually said, but he was basically talking along the lines of like he's done a really good job. It's a really difficult situation for him, and he keeps telling everyone that he's won two trophies. He was like, he's like, I feel like that's what I need. But then again, he's like, if even if I won a trophy, because he was basically saying that like there's one or two weeks where one manager gets all the clog and then it moves on to someone else. It's like they kind of spin a wheel and then it decides who the manager is that's going to get all the stick, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and at the moment, it's Ten Hag's coming for that. And Ange a little bit as well. But he, Ange was sort of saying, it was like, even if I win a trophy, it's like, you guys are still going to be on me for something else. It just goes to the next thing. Um, but in terms of what the fans think, yeah, I, I don't... The thing is, it's hard, isn't it? Because it's like, the league is so competitive now. 
if Spurs finished seventh and had a, and won a cup, that wouldn't be a bad season because the other teams that we're fighting amongst, it's going to be close in terms of the points. We could live in a world where we finish seventh, but only finish four points off the Champions League. It's the, the teams are that good now. Um, yeah, no, but then true. again, it's hard, isn't it? Because it's like I think most people would be happy with that, but also like I still think people would disappoint if we didn't finish fourth or like finishing in and around the top four conversation. Seventh is like that awkward position where it's like that's why it's such a great question because it's like I think seventh is that position. If you if it's sixth in a cup, you're like sounds shit. Yeah, if it's sixth in a cup, you're like brilliant, absolutely, one hundred percent bite your hand. Yeah, up. seventh yeah. is the one that sort of says, eh, actually like, I don't know, but um, yeah. I kind of, I mean, I, I, in terms of what Carragher's saying there, I kind of get it. But like the article was just a load of nonsense. Like, and and shout out to on a shout out to uh, Prof Spur, who is a really good account to follow on Twitter, who basically did the biggest slap back to Carragher ever. Put this amazing Twitter thread together of like why we're different, why we're better this season. It's a really good. Uh, it's a really good. Yeah. Um, I've just retweeted yeah. it, so go and have a look at that. Um, like I thought, me and Carragher were mates as well. Like, what the fuck's happened there? Yeah, fucking sort your mate out, mate. What, he was coming out a few weeks ago going, mate? oh, yeah, I would have loved to play for Spurs. Yeah. Really? Fucking show it then. Like it, Say we're going to win the league. Fucking. Yeah. Say uh, it. I, 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 I just tried to ignore it because I was like, this is how much external noise are we hearing about Spurs? And and what does Ange do? Just fucking bats it away and ignores it. Keep doing what we're doing. That's what we need to do as a fan base. Just keep yeah. pl- keep riding this. This th- like keep keep going, keep doing our thing, and um, riding this wave. And uh, I mean, Ange is Ange is so confident. Like we're saying about how he installs confidence with Solanke, etc. So confident that he's going to be successful. So let's just fucking get on it with him and uh, and see where we end up. But I mean, the the underlying numbers prove Carragher wrong. Like with our with how much XG. Like for big chances we're conceding, etc. Exactly. Oh shit! There he is, man. There he is. Um. Do you know how so much of this is like? So there's so many. Have you read it yet? Not yet, but I've seen a lot of excerpts from it on Twitter. It's like so many of it is so, so true in terms of like real reflection yeah. of what's happening now versus like what's yeah, happening in the okay. previous. Um, yeah, I might have to get it. You know, I need to, I might yeah. have to get that. So I'm. But I mean, that's the thing. So, uh, but also, you saw the reaction of us going out the Carabao Cup. Fucking, we want to be a cup side. <laughs> We we're desperate to win a how we actually how we a cup side we never fucking win a trophy but exactly yeah um, we we want to we want to be competing for every trophy like the league we're not there yet for the league we know that we're in a process cups are what we're holding on to this season so yeah fuck it let's go we saw how, how angry we were when we almost got beat by a commentary yeah it's a good job it's city so, next isn't it <laughs> oh yeah fuck it oh yeah we didn't talk about that fucking. We'll talk about it. We'll, uh, we'll talk about it next step. But yeah, yeah. Well, let's fucking can... do United. Make a statement. Come shut on. people up. Come on. Come on. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, Manchester United. Um... Come on, the Red Devils. <laughs> <laughs> Viva Ganacho. Yeah. <laughs> Great well, job, well. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I see that, if I see that Felipe there, it's on site. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't mean that. Seems like a good guy. They've got, um, they've got some, uh, they've got some like proper box office. Um, oh, it's great, isn't it? Creators, aren't they? Like Said and 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 even Said and exp- I saw Said and expressions going at it yesterday. Yeah, it's just so good. Yeah, Felipe, Angry Ginge. Yeah. Uh, um, Mohan, is it Mohan? I think so. Mohan, yeah, yeah. Come on, Manchester United. Come on, the come on, Tottenham. Come on, Tottenham. Come on, the Lily Whites. <laughs> See, I try and do an accent where it's like replicating what that guy sounds like, but actually, it sounds like someone doing a voiceover thing from the 1960s. The Tottenham Hotspur Lily White are playing yeah, 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 the yeah. weekend. It's and like black and white, everyone's yeah. holding their flags up. And Jimmy Greaves has come out and scored another goal. <laughs> Danny Blanchflower. Uh, <laughs> great job, Dominic. <laughs> great job, Brennan. Great job. <laughs> everyone, legends. Thanks for getting your questions in. Yeah, I'll and uh, we'll catch you after we uh, dick up United and uh, yeah. their own. We're going to dick them up. And we're going to speak first. about it on Monday after we've dicked them up. Dick them up. Come, come on, on Tottenham. Come on, Tottenham. Come on, the Lily Whites. Cheers, Ben. <laughs>